Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today I'm very excited because we will be analyzing a renewables energy company and as you probably know if you have watched other videos, I'm a big fan and believer that renewable energies are the future. Uh, in this case, today we will be analyzing the company Brookfield Renewal Partners. To give a bit of an overview, we will first have a general overview on the company itself. Secondly, we will be uh, checking their merger and acquisition with Terraform, which is a very, very, very important thing. Um, thirdly, we will be checking the stock price. Then we will be going to the financials. And finally, I will be giving my opinion and the price that I would like to purchase this stock at. But before I start, remember that I'm no financial advisor and uh, this video is for entertainment purposes only and that when investing in the stock market and making decisions, you should always do your own research. That said, this company operates one of the largest publicly traded renewal power platforms in the world with a portfolio of 19,300 megawatts of capacity and 5,301 generating facilities across North America, South America, Europe and Asia. Moreover, the company is specifically known to be a global leader of hydroelectric power with 64% of its assets being on that. In fact, according to the National Hydropower Association, hydroelectric power is one of the most reliable sources of energy and can help to cover uh, changes in electricity demand uh, very quickly throughout the day. The reason for that is that the hydropower plants can go from 0 to 100% uh, in a very short period of time. Wind and solar energy are good, but the problem is that their power sources, which are of course wind and sun, cannot be stored. On the other hand, water can be stored, as we know, in artificial lakes or just regular lakes and then used by uh, hydroelectric power plants whenever needed. Leaving this aside, there is something that cannot be omitted and as I already advanced is the merger with Terraform. This merger was officially completed on July 31st, 2020, in which Brookfield acquired all the assets or all the remaining assets of Terraform because they already owned uh, quite a few. And these assets of Terraform were in total 4,200 megawatts, mostly of solar and wind plants. This has been a very big announcement, as I already said, and just proves that uh, Brookfield Renewal Partners is aiming to become a leader in renewable energies. After this, let's have a quick look at how they have their assets distributed across the world. In the image you see now in the screen that is taken from the presentation in their website in which they presented the merger with Terraform, we can see that most of their assets are in North and South America with a smaller portion being in Europe and even a smaller one in Asia. In total, their power assets are worth $50 billion. In the displayed scenario, they aim for annual returns between 12 and 15% with dividend increases between 5 and 9%. And I know that with this I'm already advancing that the company is paying dividends, but I guess that this has not come as a big surprise considering that I'm a dividend investor. In any case, the stock is currently trading at $51.10 per share and at the current price they are yielding a 3.4% which is decent. Nevertheless, it is also important to consider that its price has increased significantly in the past weeks as we can see in the stock chart. Also, in the graph you can see that there is only data since July 24th, 2020, since this was when the new shares of Brookfield became public, which also included the integration of Terraform. This means that we do not have much of a graph history, and in order to see how it performed in the past, we should go and look at the graph separately of Brookfield Renewal Partners and Terraform before the merger. So looking at that, we have that Brookfield has a very nice graph with a clear uptrend since its inception. On the other hand, and sorry for the graph since it is very hard to find graphs as Terraform is no longer trading in the stock market, has been performing very very bad as we can see since it started. And the question you probably have now is, if Terraform was doing that bad or at least for what we can see in the stock market, was it really a good move from Brookfield Renewal Partners to acquire it? In order to answer this, we need to have a closer look at their financials. In terms of financials, the first thing I'd like to have a look at is the debt ratio. Looking at that, at the moment, based on Q2 results, it is of 51.47%, which is very low and makes it a conservative company from this point of view. 
Looking deeper into the balance sheet, we say it has an even higher cash position than during the same period of the past year, which is also good. This is very good, but we need to consider that it still does not display the assets taken with, from the merger of Terraform, which will probably make the, their balance sheet look a bit worse than it is, at least based on the results that we could see for Terraform on their Q1 earnings report, which is the last one that they published. As you can see in the screen, they had a debt ratio of 76.85%, which is much higher than what Brookfield Renewal Partners has, but it is still on a conservative side. Leaving this aside, let's now move into the income statements of the company. In this case, we see that Brookfield reported this past quarter to a net income of $11 million. This represents a decrease of 89.9% in the actual net profit versus the same period last year. And we also see that the main reason for it has been the decrease in revenues while maintaining similar operational costs. Looking now at Terraform, for the last period for which we have results, which was Q1, it reported a net loss of $55 million. And now checking the historical income statements of both companies, we see that Brookfield has been increasing net income over the past years, while Terraform has had losses almost every single year. After fully analyzing Brookfield Renewal Partners and also uh, a bit of Terraform uh, and their merger, it is time to give my conclusions and thoughts on the company and the stock. Firstly, I must say that I really like Brookfield Renewal Partners as a company. Uh, as I already mentioned at the beginning, I like a lot their philosophy and I think that they are growing in the right way um, and they can certainly become a leader in the sector uh, as it also, like as the renewable sector also becomes larger. Moreover, we also need to consider that the elections in the US are coming up soon and if Democrats win, it could mean that they would get more favorable policies uh, when it comes to renewable energies in the US and this could also help the Brookfield Renewal Partners perform better. Also, commenting on the acquisition of Terraform, I think that Brookfield Renewal Partners did a very good deal, not only because they acquired solar and wind assets in order to diversify a bit more their portfolio since they were very heavy and while well, they are still a bit heavy on hydroelectric generation power, but also because they acquired a company that had been clearly downtrending in the stock market and probably this was a very good deal for them. Considering what we just mentioned of the track losses that Terraform was accumulating, uh, Brookfield Renewal Partners purchased, according to Reuters, uh, the remaining percentage of Terraform at a total company valuation of $3.93 billion. This means that for the remaining 38% that they had in order to fully buy Terraform, they paid $1.5 billion. In terms of company, it is certainly one that I want to invest in, but looking at the stock price, I think that it's a bit too high at the moment. Considering that at the beginning of August it was trading at $45 per share and now it is at $51.1 a share, it represents an increase of 13.55%. Yes, they published the results of Q2, but that was at the beginning of August when it was trading at around $47 and from that moment it hasn't done much so I feel that this is just kind of like speculation and it's just going up as the whole market overall is going up. Therefore, for this reason, my buying price for these shares would be around $46 per share and as I said, this is certainly a company that I want to own so hopefully it goes down to this price and I will purchase some shares of it. In any case, this is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. If you did, then please make sure to give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet subscribed, and as always, see you next time.